Alrighty, Lotor for Life here, bringing you guys a brand new video. So, we got some interesting stuff announced recently. I, I know I haven't really been able to keep up with the news and all that, but I, I blame work. I've been working my butt off. So, uh, <laughs> just this morning, we had the new Arrow Mages uh, revealed from uh, Chaos Impact. And this is exciting because, uh, you know, the expensive Arrow Mages just got reprints. I mean, Hot Winds or Dry Winds, whatever it's called. Uh, is still like not reprinted and I think people are like buying it up. Uh, last I saw at least they were. I don't know if it still is but I digress. But you know the expensive stuff Jasmine uh, and of course we just got the link uh, were just printed or reprinted for us and now <laughs> we're getting more support later. This is awesome and I can't wait. Uh, so far we got one, two, three, four, five cards revealed. This is probably not all of them uh, if trends are to be expected, they are going to get another five cards uh, in this set. So we have a total of ten cards. Uh, don't know if we will or not. Uh, who knows? They might just decide to give five more cards to another archetype. Who knows? So first and foremost, we got a new level one uh, arrow mage. He's a wind plant, obviously. Uh, level one, eight hundred attack, zero defense. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you can only use the first, second, and third effect of this card's name once per turn. So all three effects of them are hard once per turns, which is usually pretty good because that usually means they're good effects. So uh, first effect, if your life points is higher than your opponent's, you can spell some of this card from your hand. So that right there is good for plant decks in general, not just for arrow mages, but however for arrow mages in particular, where it's easier to get more life points than your opponent. Uh, that's going to be really great. Helps make your link a bit easier and helps make you do other stuff as well. Uh, if you gain life points, uh, target one plant monster on the field. That monster is treated as a tuner this turn. That's pretty cool too. Uh, you know, uh, the deck only has one other tuner and that is the Arrow Maid Seraphy, whatever I think. Uh, it's a fairy. And she's really good as well still, so I don't think you're going to stop playing her just because of this guy. Uh, and then finally, the third effect, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can gain 500 life points. Really, really nice overall. Uh, he's just good. <laughs> Free special summon, makes stuff a tuner, and then gains life points. That, that's pretty good all around. I don't know how many you'd probably play in Arrow Mages right now, especially since the deck was already kind of uh, tight on... Uh, uh, space and everything, but I digress. Then we got a new uh, level 5 monster in the deck, which is a bit annoying, I won't lie. Uh, Bergamort, for as good as she is, uh, wasn't really played super heavily. Uh, maybe as like a one of, because explicitly because she's a freaking level 6. And now we got a new level 5. Uh, 2k attack, 1600 defense, dark plant. Uh, this is Arrow Maid's Marjoram. Uh, 3 effects as well. First effect, when a plant monster you control is destroyed by battle, you can spell some of this card from your hand, then gain 500 life points. And that right there is what makes her better than Bergamore already. Uh, just a free special summon whenever one of your monsters is destroyed in battle, and then you get life points too, which can of course trigger her and your other monsters' effects, which is just great. Uh, while your life points is higher than your opponent's, you take no battle damage from battles involving your plant monsters, which is just annoying for your opponent, and I love it. If you gain life points, target cards in your opponent's graveyard up to the number of Aroma cards, uh, monsters you control, banish them. So, if you gain life points, she can be a, what, max of 5, theoretic, no, 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 max of 6, theoretically 7, if they ever somehow manage to extra link. <laughs> Imagine Arrow Major's extra linking. But, uh, yeah, a max of, like, 6 or so. Uh, cards out of your opponent's graveyard every time you gain life points. That is annoying and is just going to be great, especially given how many decks rely on their extracts so much nowadays. So yeah, pretty good card all around. Then we got her Synchro version, Arom Aromas Ser Seraphy. Why is that word so hard for me to say? Aroma Seraphy, Sweet Marjoram. Uh, this is a level 6, 2200 attack, 2k defense, uh, Synchro effect monster. Super generic, only needs a tuner and a non-tuner to make, and she has three effects as well, with the first and third effect being hard once per turn. If this card is synchro summon, you can add one humid winds, dry winds, or blessed winds. I don't know why they don't just put winds card, I don't know. Uh, from your deck to your hand, uh, while your life points is higher than your opponent's, your opponent cannot target plant monsters you control with card effects, which is just flat out annoying, I love it. 
And then if you gain life points, target a card your opponent controls, destroy it. So, yeah, just, you know, on Synchro, search something. Uh, basically, the search card, the disruptor, and then another new card that allows you to do other cool stuff. And then, uh, second effect, you know, just making it to where your opponent can't target your monsters, which is just great. And then, of course, some more disruption. Really good card overall. Absolutely fantastic. I'm sorry if I start yawning, guys. It is early in the morning, and I did not get much sleep. <laughs> Next up, we got Aroma Gardening. Uh, it's a continuous spell card. I love this artwork. It's just adorable. <laughs> uh, God. Is, is, is Laurier the only guy in the whole Aroma archetype? Uh, that, or, that or he's a she, and I just can't tell. Uh, I, I get the feeling there's going to be some memes around this, but oh well. <laughs> uh, so, Aroma Gardening has two effects, <clears throat> and you can only use each one per turn. If you normal summon or special summon an Aroma Monster or Monsters, you can gain 1,000 life points. Second effect, when your opponent declares an attack, if your life points is lower than your opponent's, you can special summon one Aroma Monster from your deck. So this is pretty good overall. Get more life points, but however, if your opponent declares an attack and you happen to be lower, it can save you from getting killed. So, oh, opponent attacks you, uh, special summon, uh, oh darn it, which one was it? Uh, the blue one, I can't remember, oh, Rosemary. You special summon Rosemary, uh, on special summon, gain a thousand life points, Rosemary effect, switch your opponent's monster to defense, and then you realize it's a link and you kind of get screwed either way, but, <laughs> oh well. I really wish this would negate the attack as well, it'd be really nice. And then we got the final card, for now at least, uh, Blessed Winds, which of course has all the Aroma Seraphy monsters in it, and I just absolutely love that artwork. Uh, so, Continuous Trap card, you can only use the first effect of this card's name once per turn, and it's only got one effect, but it's kind of like split up into three mini effects. So, once per turn you can activate one of these effects. Send a plant monster from your hand or face of field to the graveyard, gain 500 life points. Target a plant monster in your graveyard, shuffle it into the deck, then gain 500 life points. Or, pay a thousand life points, spell summon an aroma monster from your graveyard. <clears throat> really, out of these three effects, I feel like you're going to be using the second and third effect the most. Uh, being able to recur your monsters to the deck, get some life points, trigger to your monsters' effects on the field is really great. And then, of course, paying a thousand life points for a monster reborn once per turn is really, really good. So, I feel like this card is mostly going to be used for its second and third effect, not so much for that first effect, because how often do you want to load up your graveyard? Uh, especially for aromas, they don't have that heavily of a of a graveyard wanting to be in there and even then the one monster they want in the graveyard has an effect to get her in a graveyard so uh yeah there isn't really any need for that first effect for the deck in all honesty uh, next up i want to talk about watt train because this is freaking awesome i was not expecting watts of all archetypes to get any new support anytime soon and this is really making me want to go and play Watts again. I haven't played Watts in forever. I actually still have my uh, core for it. Cause, and and I, I say still have. Because I never actually... <laughs> I never got around to making a deck profile for it. Uh, I got it done and everything. Really liked it. And then I never actually got around to recording a deck profile for it way back in the day. Who knows? Maybe because we're getting Watt train, I'll sleeve it up again. And maybe we'll do like a Watt stun thing or something. But I digress. So... Watt Train here is a normal spell card, and this is a stupid good card for the archetype. Uh, first and second effect are once per, hard once per turns, and uh, you can't use the second effect to turn into a center graveyard. So, first effect, add Watt cards with different names from your deck to your hand, except Watt Train up to the number of Thunder Monsters with different names you control. So, right there, you if you got like three or four Thunder Monsters on the field, which is super easy to do thanks to the Hunter family, uh, you're able to add three or four, you know, depending on how many monsters you have in the field, uh, Watt cards from your deck to your hand. And notice how it says any Watt cards, just equal to the number of uh, Thunders you control on the field, which can result in a lot of uh, really good stuff. Now, right now, Watts, I would argue, only have one good spell or trap card, and that's Watt Cancel, which, if you don't know, it's a, it's a counter trap, and whenever your opponent would normal summon... Uh, a monster, and I think it also stops special summoning too. It's been a while since I've read it, but basically, it's a solemn warning that you got to discard a Watt monster to use. Uh, and now it's searchable too. Well, it was searchable before, but now it's even easier to search. So, right off the bat, you're going to be adding Cobra, uh, Pheasant, Giraffe, uh, <laughs> uh, Watt Cancel, 
uh, the tuners. I really hope the deck gets better tuners. Like, oh my god, I hate the tuners. There, there's only one good tuner, and every other one is terrible. So if you actually do want to summon the synchro monsters who aren't that bad, you gotta play the crappy tuners, and I hate that. So I really hope the deck gets some, some better tuners. Now, granted, with the second effect, that really doesn't matter too much. If this card is in your graveyard, except the turn it was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card, special summon as many Watt monsters of different names as possible from your hand. So, first effect loads up your hand. Second effect, you banish them. You banish it from your graveyard. Just put them all on the field. <laughs> this card is great. I love it. I'm really hoping this isn't all we get for Watts. They could really use some more, especially new tuners and some new spells and traps. So it'll be great seeing what they get. Uh, next up. Uh, I just want to kind of mention this because this is awesome and I love it. Uh, so if you guys haven't been paying attention to the news, Konami's been doing this like poll thing to vote for what the next structured X thing will be. And uh, the, they had like a starting of like 10 uh, options and now it's in the finals where it's the top 5. Which And this is the last update until tomorrow. Uh, Crystal Beast is currently in 5th place followed by Trap Tricks. Charmer, Shadal's, which held the front lines for pretty much since the beginning, and then just recently, Sager Beast overtook them. That is awesome. I'm I, I am genuinely excited for a uh, for a Sacred Beast structure deck. Okay, Sacred Beasts are really close to being a really good deck in my opinion. They have that really just abhorrently good field spell, uh, a Fallen Paradise, and they are e so easy to cheese out now from the other stuff. I feel like all they really could use is like maybe some upgraded versions, some uh, spells and trap support, maybe something that like lets you negate stuff, you know, stuff like that. I, I can't wait to see what Konami would do with this. You know, should all already have everything they could want. The only thing they really could want is a is a miracle fusion and a and a uh, what was it? A super polymerization. Okay, throw that in a set. You know, you don't they don't need a structure deck for that. Uh, Charmers, they need a lot. Uh, trap tricks are kind of almost there. I feel like they really just need more special summons or ways to additionally normal summon. And Crystal Beast could always use more support as well. <clears throat> Honestly, I'm hoping Konami takes note of this and just makes uh, a deck for all five. <laughs> you know, make a deck. Uh, you know, make all, give all five a structure deck, uh, seeing the positive turnout for it. But I don't know. What do you guys think uh, about these new cards and the news about Sacred Beast possibly being one of the next structure decks? <laughs> Uh, what do you guys think? Thank you for watching. Have a great day. See you all later. Peace out and goodbye.